Don't forget to subscribe. Also click on the bell for notifications. Hello, this is Jessica from Lily Marie Creations coming to you with another SWF MAS 12 video. So here I am doing the H test along as troubleshooting some things I had go wrong. So either the thread went off track, uh, they need, the thread broke, as well as um, adjusting the bobbin. So I'll show you thoroughly how to do that um, because I had some bobbin popping up and also doing the default. As you guys maybe try that 24 by 24 and you guys know that the hoop is a nine by nine and your <laughs> design is uh, around, around uh, sorry, around a seven by maybe five and it's showing that it's too big. So I'm gonna show you how to run that default. So hold on to the video. So again, this is a H test with some extras. Okay, so I am choosing the hoop right now. Um, I already did this design, so I'm re-recording this area. So on the, I'm using the 24 by 24, which this really needs to be adjusted uh, because when I do my position for this, it is falling around the parameter. So uh, let me show you if I do a trace on this. it is going over because it's saying that it's going over the limit so i can't basically use that because the image is too big so i'm going to close that up i mean exit first check it again with the position let me choose the hoop again okay and then check the position on there and it's falling outside of the parameters, as you can see. So it's not gonna let me choose that. So I'm not sure if you guys have done images that you guys know it's gonna fit into that hoop because this one is like a, I think a four by, it's less than a seven inch, seven inch on the top. Let me close that. Let me see, actually, I'm not going to close that so it's a little bit more than uh, less than seven inches so basically i am going to choose a default for this and i'm going to press ok i am going to let this run so i know it's almost based on the parameters but look at the position right here it shows that it's still going to be within um, range for that you can do a trace on there, but you don't really have to. If you're gonna do a trace, do not put the, the hoop in there that's small because it's gonna run the entire area for this. So you're gonna be using a default for your image, but um, know your parameters are within that frame hoop that you'll be using. So it won't hit um, either the plastic or the metal. But right now I'm gonna run a trace on there. I clicked on trace, so what do you like to start? I press okay without that hoop. As you can see, it's gonna go the entire tire parameter. Okay. So. Okay, now that I did it without the hoop, I am going to run it also with the hoop, but I'm going to show you again for the 24 by 24 since you have a 24 by 24 and it's a 9 by 9 hoop right here. This image is less than 7 inches by around 4 to 5 inches. So on some of my designs when I was putting it in there, it didn't let me go over 5 inches by 5 inches and you know. I was kind of scared to run it bigger, but you got to live and learn. So basically when I do that hoop of the 24 by 24 and we check the position and so that way we know where the range is at. So, and you can see it's hitting the top and the bottom. So it's telling you to make it smaller than the seven inch. Come on. And this is a nine by nine hoop. So let's do the trace. 
trace. I'm not going to even show you the frame because it's not going to even run all the way. So once it hits that corner, the corner is like right above the H a little bit. And let me get it closer. Let me take out the bar. As you can see, we have a good enough space over here that it's not hitting the hoop. The hoop bottom is underneath here. So, I'm gonna see, I gotta check online to see if there's somewhere where I can adjust this, um, adjust the parameter on here. I will do another video, but for right now, cancel. We're all learning. So, limit cancel, close that. And, I'm gonna do that hoop again for the default. Press OK. And you can estimate that it's running around a little bit larger than that because it's going around your image. So just to let you know, I'm gonna run it so it, you know it's not gonna go all that green box and it's gonna hit your size. It's just gonna go around your image, design that trace. So we're gonna run that trace and I'm going to press that and then I'm going to go to the image to show you exactly. I'm going to try to get as close as I can so you guys can see where that red light will be hitting. And I'm going to press OK. So right here, it's actually a little further. It's not up there really, it's right here. It's just a light beam bouncing, but it's not hitting the sides. So, and then that's it for that trace. So if you have a Mighty Hoops that's a different size, more or less go by the 24 by 24, and then just do a default when you realize that the top and bottom are like close to parameter because you have an extra inch, an inch, there's nine inches by nine inches. If you have a Brilliance or another software, check your parameters on that. Um, in regards to your frame that you're going to use. So if it's an 8x8, eight eight, you can still use this, uh, the, the default parameters, but you can estimate it from a 24x24 24 24 hoop when you do your trace. So, okay. Let's um, go on with the video. When I put this in, okay, so I'm going to show you what this hoop, where the parameters are, even though they look like they're outside of the range. So this is where it hits, so there's still room for the needle to um, get placed on here. And then just like down here too. So there's like a, well, it's folding over. So there's at least a little bit more than an inch width on here and an inch right here. So using the default, you can run that 24 by 24 for this these designs again it's less than seven inches from the top to bottom all right and then is it boiling alicia yes hold on let me finish this first and then all you do is make sure you put these in position not like this make sure you have it it should right there so you can see that little area here and then on the other side it's in the area here so it won't be able to move all right so that's it for that part okay so these are the needles that i'm using inside my machine i'm using a t-shirt fabric for this test so they're the 7511 ballpoint organ and I did get a cardboard type pre-wound bobbin, l shape on here. And these are what they, they look like. This one came with uh, 144 pieces. So, okay, on to the video. So I ran it prior before, uh, a few times it was before I changed the needles as well as the position had changed when I turned it off and returned it back on for the machine. Okay, so I'm gonna 
get this to run. Red light is on, that means the system's ready. The pre-wound bobbin, um, I just uh, repositioned it because I had this run prior. I removed all the stitches out, as you can see. And I'm gonna start this up. Okay, for this one, it get, got me a needle break even though the top and the bottom were fine. Sometimes when that happens, either the bobbin has a little bit of lint or something just trigger, triggers it. So it could have been lint on the needle or, you know. I was going to cut this, but I ended up just uh, running it. Okay, so I'm not sure why it's stopping.
Okay, so this one got stuck on the bottom of the spool. Uh, for this one, uh, I bought it, I forgot where I bought it from, but it has like a little curvature for the, the string to hold on when you first buy it. So it got stuck on the bottom right there in that area. So I'm going to just fix that. That got stuck. Even though I don't have the rubber on there. So that was probably because it got stuck. Let me finish that one off. So before I run that fill tip, I'm going to adjust the tensions on here. I'm gonna set set this at a thousand now that I don't have the metallic. the 24 by 24 frame it was showing me that I needed to decrease my size because it was going to hit the bottom but it's not so I still see the color Where is it? okay it got stuck on the top Okay, it's still not working even without the rubber for it to get stuck. Good thing I don't have to thread it. So I'm going to leave that there.
found why it was breaking. It was one of the knobs. Not sure if you can see. Okay, so this one right here. This one right here, it got jammed on the top part. This should go into the wheel. Okay. So it should go into the wheel down here. And then be careful. And keep it on inside the wheel. I'm going to hold that in place and pull Did I not get it? It came back, back out. Okay. Everything, everyone's on track. Wait a minute, I see one. No, it's, it's correct. Yeah, that one's on track. Okay, so that's only one. Okay, so enough, enough of this bobbin um, showing. So I am gonna check the bottom tension. I did mess with the top, but I think it is a bobbin. So let me fix that next. Okay, so I'm gonna tighten it up. Okay, so the one that you need to tighten, so you see the position here, on here, you need to tighten up that larger one screw here, and you're gonna go a little bit to the right, and I'll show you what it should um, look like uh, when it, the tension is um, not too tight and not too loose. Hopefully it's not too tight. So. Okay, so that was a little bit too quick, but I'll show you guys later on in the video. But when you hold it in place, it shouldn't move down. So it should stay put like if it's too tight. But when you pull the string, it should come out smoothly after that.
I forgot that this is metallic gold, so I forgot to lower the speed to 750. It was running at a thousand. Okay, so I have some thread, uh, thread shred on this one, so I just re um, cleaned it up, the thread, and restarting this over. I think I have to either um, tighten or loosen that top tension to prevent this. Uh, but it's my brown color that um, it did this already a few times. Okay, after this shred, um, shredding of this thread, um, it kept on stopping and stopping and stopping and stopping. So I think there was some lint left around that needle causing that to have a sensor, the sensor go off.
Okay, so I am showing really close to that one right here after the fact. Right here, you can see some lint on the area and this is what was triggering, triggering the thread to stop going every few seconds. So I'm gonna clean that up for when I run it again.
I was checking if there's any lint that um, causes caused the problem but also I will be doing the bobbin again and pulling it out to make sure that it's running good um, it did get loose off the top part of it so perfect time to show you guys again direction this is where the top is so I'm gonna put that back in yeah so I won't mess up my my groove <laughs> nothing okay so I'm gonna put it back on this little area on here and then it's kind of hard to see and then it goes into this little area here. Okay, and then I got to wrap it back up again. I'll try to get this. And I will try to wrap it twice. Okay, and then when you hold it, huh? this is how it holds, mm -hmm. and it pulls really easy. Mm -hmm. So having that tension, that a little bit, holding the sturdy, and not just sliding out, um, has given me good stitches so far. When I had it too loose earlier, that's all um, the, where the H's are. It was causing my um, issue with my bobbin. So let me press start on this.
Okay, so right here I'm checking it out. So the top looks a lot better. Uh, just the black and a, a few of them, I do have to adjust maybe the tension just on them. I'm gonna have to observe it really closely to see if it's just the top tension and just needs adjustment or I need to tighten up a little bit more of the bobbin for it. Um, right now I will show you the back, how it looks. Uh, but those H's, those were really, really bad. So that bobbin um, tension was too loose. As you've seen earlier, if you've seen that, um, how I held the bobbin up and then how I was able to pull it and it glide with no problem. So this was my prior stitch out. You couldn't really tell here since the bobbins already was the same color. This one you can really tell all throughout these ones. This one is a little bit camouflage. This came out okay, but it could have been the tension and everything that I had it on prior because I had ran this the last design. So, and then this one, not so good. This one, so-so. This one, mm-mm. And that's when I adjusted the bobbin tension on there. So I had it where if you held it, it, it would fall. So I tightened it tighten it up as you've seen on the video where if you hold it it does not move but once you glide it through it's perfect so that was prior to this one and this one came out fine the thread's coming up and then this is the back side of the bobbin let me turn it the right way <laughs> so these are the ones I was having problems with more or less that's when it was finally fixed compared to all that it was overtaking it and then here just having issues with that brown color the overall looks great so next is I'm um, doing a stitch out now that I have tested out all all of these needles positions so all right so hopefully this would help you on your journey with the SWF and getting some perfect designs if you if you are new and this is your first time doing the H test. So, okay, so this is Jessica from Holy Moon Creations. Till next creation, or a sort of um, either uh, my first time doing these projects or um, doing this. Um, uh, what is it to help you guys? see what doesn't work or what does work on these machines especially this SWF I also have my Glowforge my Cricut my white toner so if I have some a first time run if it comes perfect you'll see it on here or if it doesn't mess up and I rerun it and I do something different I will record that too and then just um, put it on the YouTube so okay see you guys later